Hey everybody, welcome back to Champ and Sons in our NCAA football series with the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And we have got a heck of an episode for y'all today. Week two of our current season and we are on the road back to our home of Na- uh, of Knoxville, Tennessee. And so this is going to be a major battle. Um, They destroyed us in our first season after I made the move to Tech, so we are looking for a little bit of payback, if you know what I mean. Now, before we get to it, I told y'all I wanted to focus on doing some scouting uh, beforehand, and reasons like you just saw right there, Lewis Turner going from what amounted to a mid-60s to a high-60 running back is one of the biggest reasons to scout. Clinton Davis, he does also improve up to 65 overall. So not, these guys aren't going to be, you know, coming out as an 80 rating as a freshman, but they're definitely kids who can develop, who we see more of, and we understand kind of what tools they actually have available. Now, Tyler Greenwood, a running back, he does drop a little bit. So we kind of put some focus here on Lewis Turner um, after the scouting to see kind of what happens with him. Now, Karan Ross, he improves to a 67 overall. I said, this is why I wanted to get scouting out of the way. Um, Once we do this, we can start kind of cutting some guys off our list as far as who we really want and who we're watching on the team. Uh, Once we start making those cuts, we can really assign proper pointages to some guys. Because the problem with being at Tech is you're competing with a lot of bigger schools, whether it be Texas, whether it be A&M. TCU, um, Big 12 schools with Oklahoma that's right there, Uh, SEC schools with kids out of Louisiana, Pac-12 with Arizona that's right there, Colorado and stuff. So there's a bunch of competition around. So I want to get my scouting done early because I don't want to focus on guys who are going to end up being a bust over time. Um, It's kind of one of the biggest things. And so that that's kind of what our focus on here is happening. John Christensen, 55 overall. Uh, and a lot of these guys that are lower rated into the 50s, you know, at this point, obviously I haven't offered them a scholarship yet. And in reality, it's something I'm not really looking forward to, but maybe just have to do it for the simple fact of depth. And, you know, maybe these guys, once they get to our program, will develop quite a bit. You know, you can always have that type of hope, right? But Gary Re- Gary Reyes is our quarterback. He's our top scouting quarterback, but I think everybody that we've gotten in the last couple of years, um, we have hope for another couple of seasons, hopefully after this one. He is a junior. Kennedy um, is a sophomore this year, so we'll have him for at least one more, two more years. And then some of the guys we got last season will still be with us. So I think our quarterback room is pretty well stocked. Um, running backs, we definitely need to look at. I'm trying to keep a few more of them, but we have the lead on a lot of those guys. Um, Same thing with our receiving core. We really need to boost them up. The problem is a lot of these receivers that are higher rated generally right now are not focused on us as a school for the most part because a lot of what we do is more of an option style offense at this point. We do pass the ball plenty. We have plenty of yards and plenty of passing touchdowns, but it's not going to be an overall widespread type of thing. Right. So we finish up the scouting and let's take a look at this game before we return home. Now, keep in mind, Tennessee, this will be their first game of the year. We played in what amounted to realistic week zero. They called it week one, but it's really week zero. And so this is the official start of um, the season for pretty much everybody else. So Tennessee hasn't played a game yet. I'm glad our guys got some work in last week um, against the tough Nebraska team to come into this one. It is going to be a tough matchup here, not because they're SEC, but because Tennessee is a pretty good team. And when I was their coordinator, I did some hellacious recruiting and brought in a lot of guys that you're going to see right now would be seniors um, and juniors at this point, because this is our third year removed from Tennessee. And so coming up, we are back home. This is going to be a Saturday afternoon game here as Tennessee's ranked number 22. And if you look at their ratings overall, offense is 95 to our 93. Defense, they have a 97 to our 87. And that one I do question. Having a defense at a 97 and your team is starting out at number 22 overall just seems a little off. That may be some more of the, more of a little bit of an SEC type bias, assuming that because that's the conference they play in, they are going to have a high-rated defense. 
um, hopefully we'll be able to pick them apart, right? And we've got a lot of weapons ourselves. Kyle Jones, Dominic Holt, Chris Birch on the offense. And then even on the defense, okay, we got Wilson coming off. We got uh, was it Andre Hayes, Aaron Johnson, some Lawrence Anderson. We got we got a bunch of guys um, that we can that we can fill in some spots with. So we are number sixteen. We did pull out a win over the number thirteen team last week and only increased by one. Um, definitely not a whole lot of respect in that area as far as rankings go, but hopefully we can change some minds today. Now, starting out, they are going to have Burton as their starting quarterback in the first snap. He's going to go down on the sack, try to shift himself out of the pocket, but Ty Wilson, he just bull rushes his man into the backfield, and Burton really has nowhere to go. Actually, he spun move around him. Kind of surprised on that one. Didn't know Wilson had that in his repertoire. And Burton was kind of moving out of the pocket, but just shifted right at Wilson. Nothing he could do to escape that one. So he will be sacked for a loss of seven. As our defense makes a big play to start this game out, hopefully trying to quiet down this crowd rather quickly. They come out for their second play, second and 17. Burton in a shotgun formation has a snap. Scans over the field. Pressure gets there. Finds McMahon, his running back, and he's going to be brought down. Albert McMahon gets nine-yard reception on that one, and that's going to make it third and eight now. And they are going to go in the hurry-up offense. Burton still in a shotgun. Drops back. Pressure comes. He fires it over to the right side, and he's going to make the catch. Pennington had him, but Nick Russ jumps up and gets that reception. Pennington had him man for man, but Russ went up and got it. And that is going to be a big play for this volunteer offense. As they come on down, hurry up. Burton in a shotgun, hands it off to McMahon to the right side, and Wilson's going to wrap him up there. He pushed, got in the backfield once again. Getting penetration is disrupting this offense so far. And that was a good tackle on their superstar running back. And so now second and 12 is where we stand at about the 35-yard line after that big play a couple big pass a couple plays ago and Burton's going to come out with five wide nobody in the backfield with him as he gets the snap stands up in the pocket it holds three line three rush and he's going to throw that one up and Hayes will knock it down Andre Hayes gets the deflection a lot of guys were dropped back in that zone right where they were looking to throw it so he didn't have a whole lot of tight lanes to try to fit that one through and so we are able to knock that one down and bring up a third and 12 now they're going to be out in the shotgun formation once again, three wide. Burton has a snap, scans over the field, pressure comes. He throws it up. Johnson's going to intercept it. Johnson gets tackled almost immediately, but oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Johnson just jumped up. It's like Burton didn't even see him there. And on that route, he was just underneath it, jumped up and made the snag as we have got the first turnover of this ball game now. And we are putting our offense on the field. And now, a little bit later in that drive, we are at about the 30-yard line. Holt is in a pistol formation. A little bit of play action. Drops back. Stands in the pocket. Fires Kyle Jones. He's going to bounce off a tackler and get brought down at the 8-yard line. Kyle Jones, 21 yards on that reception. Holt stood in the pocket. Didn't panic too early. Even when pressure was coming, delivered a good pass. He's got 55 yards on four or five passing so far on this opening drive. Now Jones, with a big-time play, gets brought down. But he does bounce off that one tackler and kind of shows we are here to mean business. You know what I'm saying? That's what we are doing right now. As we come set to the line on this one, at about the nine-yard line, shotgun formation, three-wide set. So he has a snap, hands it off to Birch to the right side, and they brought the perfect run blitz at that time as he does get brought down behind the line. Well, yeah, no, yeah, about, I'm going to say no gain. They're going to put him about the nine. Oh, he does lose a yard. Never mind, all the way back to the 10-yard line now. So second and goal from the 10 is where we are standing at the moment. As Holt is in a shotgun formation, four wide, has a snap, scans over the field, fires it, and that's going to be deflected, almost thrown an interception himself. Gerald Branch for the volunteer defense knocks that one down. 
Holt, not, you cannot be making those risky throws. We've got to be smarter than that, especially with this being the opening drive. We have momentum because of the turnover, and now we're marching it down the field. We've got to be smart about this. So third and goal, four and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. Holt in a shotgun formation, play action, drops it off and almost gets a pick, but the defenders run into each other. Branch gets his second deflection in almost as many plays. And that is going to force us to kick a field goal as we get set. Harris puts the boot to it, and that one will go through the uprights right there. So we have an early lead here in Tennessee. As we will try to maintain it, we do get another stop on this volunteer offense and get possession of the ball back. Holt going to be in a shotgun formation, three wide. Has the snap, scans over, fires our tight end. Paul off to the left side. Andy Paul picks up 14 yards. On that one, that'll be his third catch of the day for a total of 40 yards already. He's kind of starting to make himself shown in this game. But then again, we we haven't used our tight end all that much, um, even last season, so they may be kind of letting him slide a little bit. So I'm sure their focus will change. Now we are in the second quarter with nine minutes to go, still leading three to nothing, but Chris Birch trying to change that one as he picks up 10 yards on that run. He's got 20 yards on six carries, averaging just over three yards per carry. They did not give him the first down. I cannot believe that. So second and inches is where we stand now. And this is at the 13-yard line, so we've got to be smart about this. No turnovers, no stupid plays, just good, smart football. Second and inches. We run an option. Holt keeps it and gets slid down, but he almost got his head knocked off, to be fair, I guess, on that one. And so now it is third and three here for this Red Raider offense. As we, man, I, I'll say this. I would rather take a field goal than obviously not get any points, right? I mean, if we can get a touchdown and go up by two scores, I'd be way happier about that than a six to nothing lead. But, and this is also one of those types of games where you got to take what you're given, right? So now on a third and three, Holt has two running backs in the backfield and a shotgun formation as the snap rolls out to his right, fires it, and that's going to be deflected down. Branch, with his third deflection, he is getting in the way a lot today. Third deflection, so three out of the four incomplete passes by Holt is because of Branch. He's got seven of 11 for 90 yards here into the second quarter. So we boot that one through another field goal by Harris. Not known for kicking this often. His leg is probably going to start getting tired soon. And after that field goal, here come the volunteer offense running right past our guy, McMahon. He's down the left sideline. Pennington can't wrap him up. White tries to finally bring him down. Anderson got over there a little late. Albert McMahon picks up about 39 yards on that rush. And that was a big-time play for this volunteer offense as they are now on the move, still in a shotgun formation. Burton, he's going to scan over the field, has a snap. Play action, fires it right over the middle, and he's going to be blasted down. Stephen Brown does make the catch and pick up about seven yards on that one. He's got 16 yards on his two catches today. So second and three is where this game stands and right now it's a 6 nothing lead for the Red Raiders. McMahon trying to change that one lower in his shoulder as he picks up 8 yards on that rush. He's now got 45 yards and 3 carries. So got to tighten up our rushing defense a little bit. It's hard to do that with the quick uh, offense, but we just got to find that right formation. Burton on an option keeper. He's going to be blasted down. He almost scores but comes up just a yard short as this Tennessee offense is trying to take the lead, as they are now down at the one-yard line with the second and goal. Burton comes set with the shotgun. Three wide receivers to the left side, one tight end on the line to the right. Has the snap, hands it off. No, it's going to be an option keeper, and Burton's brought down for a four-yard loss. Zach Wells got past his man and just had eyes for Burton that whole time and brings him down at about the five-yard line. That'll make this game third and goal now from the five. To the Red Raiders trying to hold on to this lead at six to nothing. Tennessee trying to take it over for us. And Anderson, he's going to blast Hester in the backfield. Wow, they tried to hand that off just over off the left guard. And Anderson comes flying through. 
and puts him to the turf, and that is going to force a field goal now. So Tennessee lines up for the field goal, and this would be about an extra point distance for a college, about 20 yards, give or take, and they are on the board now in a 6-3 to three game. Now taking a look at scores from around the nation, Arizona, number 25 in the country, is leading Baylor 14-7 to seven right now as they are in the second quarter with 7-24 remaining. So here we come near the end of the first half, just under two minutes remaining in the second quarter. Score is still 6-3. to three. We are on the move as we hand that one off to Birch. He's going to pick up three yards up the middle. Pretty rough day for him so far. He's got 29 yards on eight rushes, and we're not seeing a whole lot of wiggle room opening up. So second and seven is where this one stands at about the 45-yard line. Holt comes out with five wide. Here as we approach the one-minute mark, he has a snap, fires it over the middle. He's going to have Davis down the middle, and he's brought down at about the 14-yard line. Oh, man, they just let him go on that one, and that will take us right into the red zone. Davis, one of our backup receivers, they just completely forgot he was even there, and we take advantage. So first and 10, Holt fires it over. He's got Kyle Jones into the end zone. Touchdown, Tech. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Kyle Jones doing it again this year, just like he did last season, starting to rack up some points for our offense, as that will give us a two-score lead on that touchdown. A great route and perfect pass delivered by Holt. And that's going to send us here to the extra point. It is 12-3. to It is about to become 13-3 to with one minute remaining in the second quarter. So a pretty defensive struggle here in Tennessee so far, but I think we may have just been able to find some wiggle room. But now Tennessee looking for their own wiggle room. As this is college football. It ain't over till the clock hits all zeros. Still at about 40 seconds left in the half. Burton trying to get Tennessee on the march. Delivers it to McMahon over the middle, and that's going to be a nine-yard reception as they get it down to about the 22-yard line here and bring up a second and one. As they come set, they have the snap. Burton scans over the field. It is in those busy pocket, throws it up, and they're going to make that catch too. You've got to be kidding me. Two times we should have had an interception. Their guy goes over top of us and grabs it. Now this clock is still rolling, 17 seconds here. Burton in a shotgun formation. As we try to shift some guys around, Burton standing tall in the pocket, moves around and fires that one out. No one was there, no one was available, and it will sail incomplete. So the clock is stopped now with 10 seconds remaining. On a second and goal, it looks like from about the three-yard line here, as they try to cut into our 10-score ten ten lead, our 10-point lead. And they will do this. Albert McMahon, during my word verbal confusion, takes a handoff to the right and gets into the end zone. And that's going to make this game 13 to 10 after they get this extra point here. One thing we just did not want to do is allow them to get that touchdown at the end of the half. And what did we do? We allowed them to get that touchdown at the end of the dang old half. So 13 is 10 is where it stands. Number 16, Texas Tech, leading number 22, Tennessee, right now here in this game. And taking a look at some of their stats for the second half and some of these plays, it's been kind of minimal for both sides. I think, you know, a 13-10 game kind of depicts that. But both defenses have really stepped up. We've been able to put in a lot of pressure on the quarterback. And we, we did get the turnover um, on the interception. So I, I'm glad to see our defensive line is stepping up. We're just a split second too slow. So we're not getting all the sacks we really should. And our guys, I mean, they're there in position. And maybe that has to do with the overall rating for our defensive backs. You know, we're in position to make some of these interceptions, to knock the ball down, and we just don't do it. So... Maybe we can get some of that stuff changed going to the second half, make this thing a little bit easier for us. So if you take a look, we do lead in passing yards 176 to 151, but they lead us in rushing yards 79 to 52. Time of possession is generally going to be different between us. One, I am more of a conservative offense. I like to work down the field, hammer on, and on, hammer on the other team, and just take away their will to play. 
And so that's kind of what I try to do. So I, I don't take time of possession too much into account. Now well, let's get back into the game here at about the seven and a half minute mark coming up in the third quarter as we are on the move with this one. We're at about the 37 yard line here. Holt just had to run out for a gain of one yard, so we do have it at second and nine. He comes out in the pistol formation, hands it to Birch. Big hole open over the middle. Birch breaking tackles, and he's going to be brought down after 12 yards. Chris Birch now finding some space, has 67 yards on the afternoon after 13 rushes. So definitely starting to see some wiggle room open up here in this half, and that's kind of what you go for with this offensive option style. So now we're going to come out first and 10. Another shotgun formation, three wide receivers, one tight end. At the snap, he scans over, rolls to his right, fires it. He's got Kyle Jones for another 12-yard reception. Holt saw the blitz and looks like he actually changed the play on that one, and he hits Jones, who's now got 62 yards on four receptions and the touchdown scored near the end of this first half. So we are at the 13-yard line here, well inside the red zone with a first and 10. So Holt comes out in the shotgun, three receivers to the left, and one tight end to the right. As the snap, scans over, rolling out to the right side, pressure comes. He's going to find Birch, who lowers his shoulder. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Get your guns up, Lubbock. Texas Tech just scored a touchdown on an improbable play. Holt comes back, throws across his body. The one thing you don't teach quarter you teach quarterbacks to not do, he does, but Birch, that he athleticism, the playmaker that that young man is, he comes up big for his quarterback and gets us into the end zone here for the first score of the third quarter as we'll take the lead 20 to 10. Now taking a look at some other top 25 action going on right now, Virginia is leading Maryland number 19 over number 24 with about 9 minutes and 31 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And so now with a 20 to 10 lead, we do stop Tennessee and we get the ball back. Holt is going to send Jones in motion and he hands the ball off to him. This time Jones taking the edge, cuts it back up the middle and will get about 4 yards on that rush. Kyle Jones, he's one of our playmakers, so we just have to get him the ball any way we can and see what he can do with it. So second and six now, coming at about the 31-yard line. Holt is going to be in a shotgun formation, three wide receivers. Going to be a little bit of an option keeper. Holt to the left side, makes a man miss, cuts it further to the left, at the 10, 5, touchdown, Tech, get your guns up. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby, oh, baby. Dominic Holt, a little bit of shiftiness, pushes that one to the outside, makes a couple guys miss, and then it's just pure heart for the rest of the way into the end zone right there. As we will now have a 17-point lead in this one, ladies and gentlemen. The score is 27-10 to 10 here in the third quarter. Now, some teams might fold under that. But Tennessee holding on to their offense. Burton says, anything you can do, I can do better. As he stays on his feet, he's got a convoy. He's at the 10, at the 5. And Tennessee is right back in this thing. You've got to be kidding me. Burton with a big-time run. And to be fair, when I recruited him, that was what I recruited him for, the option offense, and it paid off for them perfectly. Big time run. So Holt has a good run for a touchdown to give it a 17-point lead. Burton has a massive run for a touchdown and tries to bring it back to a 10-point lead. And that extra point does go up and through. And so the score is now 27-17 to here in Tennessee as they got a big boost from that, from that play. Both quarterbacks showing that they both belong in Division I football, making big plays in the ground and in the air. And that will take us to the end of the third quarter. So now as this fourth quarter gets ready to start, we are going to be at the seven-yard line trying to push this one home. We have a 10-point lead. If we can make it 17 coming up here to start the fourth quarter, I feel safe about our chances. Now, Chris Birch takes the option right up the middle for six yards. He's now got over 100 yards at 108 yards on 16 rushes on the day. So we have topped the century mark there. Got to love seeing that kind of production from your running back. 
So second and goal now from the two. Red Raiders offense comes to the line in a shotgun formation. Three receiver set. Birch to the left. Holt has a snap. Rolling out to his left. Nowhere to go with it and throws that one away. Blair made the smart move right there instead of trying to force him. Threw it away, and that'll bring up third and goal here in the fourth quarter. Trying to get the opening points of this quarter as well. The third and goal from the two, six feet away. This is a tough call. Do you pass it? Do you run it? I, man, I trust our running game, I will admit. So third and goal, option handoff. Birch up the middle. No one touches him. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Get your guns up, Tech. We got another touchdown on the board, and that will extend this lead. We will double them up, actually, right now. Once again, double them up. 34 to 17 here, nine minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. This has been a hell of a ball game for this offense. Now, we're going to be a little later in the fourth quarter where the score is now 34 to 24. Tennessee not wanting to go away pretty easily at all. They did score another play on a big, on a pretty big strike. So, they got it to us pretty quick, but have stopped our offense since then. We've been a little bit stymied, if you could say, after that last touchdown. And on that one, Burton fires that pass to the left side, incomplete, looking for McMahon, but just overthrows him drastically, as it's now third and one from the halfway mark at the 50-yard line, as this, we've got to hold this offense. If we give an inch, they will take a yard, I promise you that. So third and one, Burton in a shotgun formation has a snap, hands it off to Hester to the right side. And that's right where all our guys were going towards, but he does get enough, and that will make it first and 10 for the Volunteers, and they are going with the hurry-up offense, trying to keep us on our toes. Burton gets set, has a snap, hands it to Hester up the middle, big hole! Hayes finally brings him down after 11 yards. Hayes was maintaining his spot, fought off his block, and got to him pretty quickly to bring him down. But he does allow the first down. So Burton coming quickly set. Under six minutes remaining, 10-point lead for the Red Raiders. Burton takes it, takes it himself to the left side, and Pennington comes shooting through from his safety spot to make that tackle after only a gain of two yards. Holding them there. The clock is continuing to run. Tennessee's going fast, but they do that anyway, so it's nothing new. Burton, shotgun formation, has a snap. Play action. Still holding on to it. Fires it over to Miller. Couple guys miss. Anderson finally forces him out. Bounces off of him like it was nothing, but forced him out. Steve Miller on the reception. He's got 36 yards on three catches for them so far today. So we approach the five minute, five and a half minute mark as that going out of bounds does kind of stop the clock till they get everything set. Burton hands it to Hester. Anderson puts him to the turf after five yard gain. And this Tennessee offense is moving. And I'm not just talking about the no huddle. They are getting chunk yardage right now. We've got to find a way to stop them. I don't know whether we can try to force a turnover or what, but we, we have got to find a way. Now Burton fires it to the right. Brown bounces off tacklers, and they're going to get another touchdown. This game just became something completely different. We went from a 17-point lead at nine minutes to go to now we have a three-point lead with five minutes to go. So here's our next possession after they got that touchdown. They have stolen all momentum. Holt rolling to the right, and he's going to be brought down and sacked for a loss of 10 yards. Holt had nowhere to go. Our offense is struggling to find any space at this moment. But the clock is ticking. At least we can you know, run out some of the clock here. Holt in a shotgun formation has a snap. He's going to take it himself up the middle. Takes a hit but gets brought down after 11 yards. Third and nine. It's not what you want to see in this situation. But hey, I will take that over third and 20. Now in that rush, Holt actually gets himself over 100 rushing yards. For the game, he's got 101 yards on 13 carries. So good offensive run game. It just hasn't worked this fourth quarter, maybe because they knew it was coming. And now on the option keeper, we get tackled for a two yard loss. Holt should have handed that one off, but he didn't. So we had to punt this one away. And here we are, three minutes to go. 
with only a three-point lead in Tennessee. Burton in the pocket, stands tall, finds McDowell up the middle. McDowell gets taken down finally after a gain of 24. You've got to be kidding me. Our defense is losing all touch of reality right now. They do not know what is going on. So Burton comes set. We bring some pressure, stands in. He fires it. Franklin's going to intercept that one. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Franklin stepped up. He made the big interception in the Sugar Bowl for us, and he does it again here in Knoxville, Tennessee. He just undercut that route. Burton threw it, but he just did not put enough on it, and he will make the interception. And that one will do it, ladies and gentlemen. We will be able to drive this one down and kneel it out, and we escape. Ooh, do we ever just barely escape by the skin of our teeth. 34 to 31. Holt having 326 yards and three touchdowns himself. Uh, the rest of our offense, 176 yards and one touchdown. Now, Holt does get player of the game. Can't fault him for that good call. Uh, but, man, I, you know, our defense, Lawrence stepped up big time for us. Anderson made some big plays. But then again, you cannot fault the interception at the end. You cannot forget that. That is a game-saving interception right there. Birch had a terrific performance coming out of the back, backfield off uh, on the ground and through the air. We might want to look to use him in the air some more. I'm not sure. We'll kind of have to see how that goes. Um, but this does feel great. You know, Tennessee put it to us the last time we were here. Uh, maybe we'll invite him to Lubbock next season. I don't know. We'll kind of see how our schedule works out. But we, we do get out beating the number 22 team, Tennessee Volunteers, by three points, 34 to 31, back and forth. Holt and Burton for Tennessee both played great games. They really did. And this was a great warm-up game for what we got coming up in the next episode, which that is going to be our old rival, the University of Texas. They are coming to Lubbock, and we are out for revenge. So definitely subscribe if you have not already. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that little notification icon to be notified of when our new videos come up. And if you did like today's video and you're excited about the battle against Texas, hit a, the thumbs up button. It does help out the channel, and we do greatly appreciate everything that y'all do for us here at Champ and Sons. We love all everything that y'all have done for us and all the love y'all have shown us in our series, um, whether it be this one or the college baseball series um, on the channel over the past few weeks. Thank y'all very much for that. And so on that note, I will go ahead and sign off and I will see y'all in the next episode as we get prepared to take on the Longhorns of Texas. So as always, everybody, stay safe. And well, y'all know how it goes by now, right? Later, y'all.